Hello there. It's a pleasure to welcome you all to this course called MA214 in IIT Bombay Lingo. Uh, this is a very basic course in the numerical analysis and uh, we intend to run this whole course on these video lectures. There will be of course some discussion sessions with all students, but uh, the information for those discussion sessions will be given in due course. So let me start sharing my slides. All right, so it's a course which is called Introduction to Numerical Analysis and that's what we will try to do. As I said, it's a pleasure to welcome you to this course and the very basic question that one should ask, you know, um, Socrates had said that you should always ask questions. So whenever you are learning anything new, you should ask questions and um, our very basic question would be, what is numerical analysis? Meaning you have a right to know what you are going to learn in this course. And uh, the answer to this question is not an easy thing. It's not very easy to give answer. And in fact, I hope that you will be able to give your own answer to this question once the course is over, because the answer will depend on how you see this course after you are done with this semester. Meaning, of course, it will depend on how you implement the things that you have learned in this course after you are done with this semester. So in your next semesters, you will have several courses. And of course, when you go for jobs and so on, you will have occasions to use numerical analysis in various situations. And that's where you will realize that this is what numerical analysis really stands for. All right. So let me not give a direct answer to this question, but there are some ways that one can give the answer to this question and for us for the moment numerical analysis is the study of various methods and these methods will allow us to solve various kinds of equations and what kind of equations the equations can be differential equations for instance meaning whenever dynamics comes there are differential equations that you would want to solve so differential equations are some of the most important equations that we would want to solve and you will perhaps you will learn several methods to solve differential equations you will have actual numerical solutions to differential equations they might be approximate solutions but nevertheless they will be reasonably good you will also have systems of linear equations in many cases those also need to be solved and finally you will have a single equation like this fx equal to alpha which is really the stepping stone to solving equations of the first two kinds so these are some kinds of equations and we would learn to solve these kind of equations. We will also approximate, learn to approximate functions in this course. So there is, uh, this, we will see an example very soon and you will see that solving some equations often involve solving an equation for the approximated function and that is a much easier thing. And you would also be able to get the solutions to desired kind of accuracy that is demanded by the situation. And whenever we are talking about approximate functions, there are always some errors. This is something that we can perhaps learn in this course that things are not always perfect. But you can try to be as good as possible. You can try to be as good as possible given your ability. So what we would also like to study is the corresponding errors what are the corresponding errors that is also something which is a very important component so for us numerical analysis would involve in solving equations of various kinds we would also try to approximate functions and in these approximations or in giving the um, solutions which are not perfect we would want to study what are the errors we will learn, try to learn why error come, why errors come and how we can get rid of the, those errors. So those are the things that we will uh, study. We will also, of course, whenever solutions exist, we will also focus on giving approximate solutions. We will construct the solutions by hand. That's what numerical analysis will mean for all of us. Okay, so we'll start with an example. I promised you that I'll start with an example and here it comes. So the number E, 
that is something that everyone knows and this is my pet example i give it whenever i teach the calculus course also so uh, the number e is defined using this equation it's the limit of 1 plus 1 upon n power n and this is one of the first instances where we learn that you may have limit of a sequence which you may not be able to calculate so this sequence we prove in our calculus course that this sequence is convergent it's bounded above and it's an increasing sequence therefore by one of the monotone sequence uh, theorems it has to be a convergent sequence and so it converges to a real number but where is that real number can you plot that real number on the real line can you write that real number down those are the questions which don't have easy answers that's because the representation, the decimal representation for this number just goes on and on. So what we settled for is to write this number down with some kind of accuracy. So suppose I ask you to compute E, correct, up to first 10 digits. Then yes, we can write it down. In fact, some of these initial things are the things that you would have seen. You would have perhaps seen that E is equal to 2.718. This is something that you would have seen. But here is the, the rational number which is accurate, whose difference with E is accurate uh, is 0 for first 10 significant digits. Right? So if I subtract E and this number, I am going to get 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 after the decimal point and after some stage you will uh, start seeing non-zero digits. Right? So for first 10 digits, this is correct. For first 20 digits, yes, there we go. So there is a way to write this down. How do we do it? There is a way to write this down. And let me just tell you right away without beating around the bush, how we do this. So first of all, there is a function called the exponential function. So which we denote by expx. And the value of this function at the point x equal to 1 is our number e right so e power 1 is e we actually have a function when you learn about sequences and so on and afterwards we also learn about functions in our calculus course and we learn that there is this very beautiful function which is a solution of some kind of a differential equation and that's the function exponential function right and it's one of the best known functions to us meaning in Calculus course, no calculus course can go with, without studying this function in good detail. It's a function which is infinitely many times differentiable. And therefore, Taylor's theorem will come and help us approximate this function to the degree of precision that you want. So what is Taylor's theorem? Taylor's theorem says that the value of the function x, uh, function f at some uh, point x is equal to some polynomial here on the right hand side we have a polynomial it's a polynomial right so you have a constant term which is fa then you have x minus a which is a linear term and you have a coefficient for that which is f prime a plus dot 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 and you have x minus a power k what k you want is up to you so here on the right hand side we have a polynomial and on the left hand side of the equality sign there is a function so of course this is not equal there is an error term and that error term is given by some point c so you would first choose an a you will say that if i want to compute the value of my function at some point i will choose an a which is nearby that point so that the x minus a, x minus a square and so on up to x minus a power k or k plus 1, these become smaller and smaller. As you go take higher and higher powers, the differences become smaller. So that is the first choice that is up to you. Taylor's theorem allows you the freedom to choose that. Okay. And then this c, Taylor's theorem does not tell what the c is. Of course, meaning it cannot be told explicitly, but the only thing it will tell you is that C lies between X and E. That's what it will tell you. Okay. So now suppose I want to approximate the exponential function at the point X equal to 1. 
So my x is one, and let's say that I choose my a to be zero. Okay, so all these x minus a power k, these are going to be just one. One minus zero power k, so these are those are just one. And then we have several derivatives evaluated at the point x equal to zero. So this is what we are going to get that the e, which is exponential of one, is one plus one upon one factorial. Plus one upon two factorial, plus one upon three factorial, plus dot dot dot, one upon n factorial, plus e power c n plus one whole factorial. Should have been k, but let's take that also as a lesson that you know these are the symbols are not important. What is important is the actual computation. So we have that e, which we had defined as a limit of some convergent sequence, is actually equal to one. Plus one upon one factorial plus one upon two factorial dot 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 up to one upon n factorial plus e power c n plus one factorial and where this c is some real number between zero and one. Okay, so that is something that we know about e power c. That is the error term. E is the number we want to compute. This one plus blah 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 plus one upon n factorial. That is the number which you can write down and compute if you, some reasonable n is given to you. And then you have the error term. So if I want the error term to be less than some quantity, the error term is e power c upon n plus one factorial. If I want this error term to be less than some quantity, I will use some small bit of theory which I already know about the problem. Which is that between zero and one, the value of e power c is less than three. We want to compute the value of e, right? We already know that it's less than three. That is how we had actually proved that it's a convergent sequence. So this value is less than three, and therefore what I would know is that e power c upon n plus one factorial has an upper bound, which is three upon n plus one factorial, right? So if I wanted to get the expression for e such that the error is less than 10 power minus 10, I wanted to have the number which is correct up to first 10 decimal points. Then we have to find an n, right? Such that this error term is less than 10 power 10. And for that we don't actually have to compute e power c. You have to just observe that e power c is less than 3. So it will tell you that you can do this if you have an n with the inequality that 3 upon n plus 1 factorial is less than 10 power minus 10. So now your e has vanished from this equation. It's a simple calculational problem. You need to find, you do some uh, cross multiplications here and you will see that the smallest n, of course, the once you get it for some n, for any higher n also you will get the answer. But the smallest such n happens to be 13. And so you have to do that 1 plus 1 upon 1 factorial plus 1 upon 2 factorial plus dot 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 up to 1 upon 13 factorial. Once you do that, by hand you will be able to compute the value of e, which is correct for first 10 decimal points. Of course, you can do it using calculator. And I know what you are going to ask. You might as well ask why we did not do it on the calculator to begin with. But there is some limitation to calculator. And there is some benefit to what we have done. The calculator will tell you the value of E up to a certain accuracy. It cannot tell you the value of E up to say whose uh, uh, digits are correct for first 10 numbers or first 100 numbers, whatever you want. Whereas our method will give you the correct value up to our accuracy. That is something which is very important for us. And not just that, what we did was that we actually found the function which approximated the exponential function. Remember we wrote down the Taylor's theorem and the Taylor's theorem gave you a polynomial. That polynomial was the approximate function. And once you have that polynomial, it's not important what you what x you choose because once you have an x, you can choose an a which is nearby and work with that. So this approximation function, the approximating function 
can be used not just to compute e up to our accuracy but to compute any e power alpha up to any given accuracy so that's what we have seen in this example so we wanted to compute suppose there is a situation where you have to write down some particular equation and you want to get the value of e up correct up to some certain digits then here is how our very basic calculus course comes to help so there are two aspects right away that we see the first aspect is the theory behind the calculation right because we saw that there was the exponential function we knew the properties of the exponential function and taylor's theorem came and helped us approximate the function so that was the theory component and then there was of course the computation component which will perhaps be done by calculators most of the times or maybe you will have computers at your hand very precise up to high digit of accuracy and so you will be doing those calculations on computers so these are two very important aspects of numerical analysis we will see both of these we will see bit of theory we will see bit of calculation but of course you know we can't do some very heavy calculations in the course these calculations will come when you go and you know test the life outside the campuses where you have secure life so that's where the heavier computations will come here we will focus on light computations we will have to of course create some artificial situations and by creating these situations we will study some problems that you are likely to face the variants of in the actual life the heavier calculation of course we will will be done when you use numerical analysis in your own discipline programming so this is of a question which is often asked why we don't have programming of course programming is a different ball game altogether it is very interesting no doubt but it's a different thing altogether and programming is very addictive it may happen that you concentrate only on programming aspect and then you perhaps ignore the uh, theory and the actual things that you would want to learn in numerical analysis moreover you have had a full semester course on programming already and there is very little those are your competent teachers who do programming day in and day, day out and i will add very little to that there is a reason this programming course is kept in your first semester that you learn it as the beginning thing we will also have a shortage of time if we spend time on programming you know meaning at the end of this course in your next semester so your teachers will expect you to have learnt everything which is there in the syllabus this is one point of the core courses you know the core courses are the stepping stones these are the foundational courses and you should learn each and everything at least you hear about each and everything which is there in the syllabus that is very important normally when we teach some higher level courses in our department when we teach some final year courses or or the courses which are just before final year then we are not so much concerned about completing the syllabus we are more concerned about how students are taking it and what the students are interested in and so on because there are no further courses which will depend on the contents of the, those courses but here the contents of our course are important for many courses that you are going to learn so we will have to complete the syllabus and therefore we will not be able to spend any time on programming i don't mean to discourage you i would actually say that you learn it by your own methods you learn it at, at your own pace and you will see that when you learn it for your own pleasure then you learn more than learning it for marks programming is of course very much important and i'll be very happy to discuss with you off the course perhaps when this course is over about various programming aspects of this course but in this course we will have very little little time to do programming and uh, so let's start our course we will have to do some little bit of theory very small bit of theory we are going to do calculations with numbers so how are the numbers represented how do we write the numbers actually this is something that we take for granted when we learn school you know you might write 202022 the new year that has begun just now and you may just write it as 2022 but you should know that it is there is a reason for writing the digits in some certain place 
and so this 2022 is actually 2 into 1000 plus 0 into 10 square that zero is there for some reason you can't just drop all zeros and write only the non zero digits right that will change the value greatly then you have 20 and then you have 2 so that's how we write 2022 it's a short form we humans are always very lazy people and we want to write things in a shorter way so this 2022 is a short form for writing this huge number otherwise you know uh, like those prehistoric people would write uh, used to write by putting some dashes and vertical lines and horizontal lines you would have to write 2022 as a very very long number but we are using some short form a very nice way to show, write this and this place value i am very happy to inform you all which you already perhaps know that this is an indian contribution to mathematics and to the whole world so this is how we write and there is nothing sacrosanct about the base 10 although here we are using it at best 10 if you want to write it in best 2 it would be this another number so depending on you know often computers will take the number in best 2 because they only know the thing yes or no and they use only best 2 but if you ask the computer whether he is working with best 10 he or she or maybe it then it will say that yes it is working with best 10 there is this standard joke saying that uh, all the number representations are at base 10 whatever base you are going to take okay so um, there are easy methods to transform a number from one base to another and i leave it to you to take it as a homework exercise maybe you may even want to take it as a programming exercise it could be fun doing it on a program uh, to write a program for that and then see how things work out um maybe we should close this with one more small uh, example by seeing how calculators or computers see a number we we have given an um, some ex explanation on how we represent a number right and we are going to work with this kind of representations but how do computers see how do calculators see numbers so let's see one very simple calculation to understand that suppose i want to solve the equation a x square plus b x plus c equal to 0 so this is a quadratic equation and we learn in our school um, how uh, this equation can be solved we just complete the squares take some constants here and there and then use square roots and so on so it is expected that we know how to compute square roots and once we know how to compute square roots then we can solve this equation uh suppose i take a to be 1 c to be 1 so my a is 1 the constant term uh, c is 1 and the equation is what is called a monic equation that means the highest degree coefficient the coefficient of x square is 1 okay and then i have only b which is minus of 10 power 4 plus 10 power minus 4 perhaps some of you are already seeing where this example is going to go but let's see when you have monic equation which is to say that the coefficient of x square is 1 the roots of this equation will be alpha beta say or x1 x2 and you will write it as x minus x1 x minus x2 then the constant term c is the product of x1 and x2 right because x minus x1 x minus x2 you will have x square minus x1 plus x2 into x plus the product x1 x2 but the product x1 x2 is 1 so we know already that x1 and x2 are reciprocals of each other and the way the equation is constructed you will see already that the solutions are x1 equal to 10 power 4 x2 equal to 10 power minus 4 that's how i have actually constructed this equation this is what i mean by saying that we will have to construct artificial situations which you are likely to face variants of okay so this is an equation that i have created and we also can easily compute the solutions but suppose you take the formula for the solutions and feed it to a calculator say it's a calculator whose precision is of 7 decimal digits perhaps these days we have calculators which may have precision of 10 digits or 15 digits but in old days it was very common to have calculators with seven pre 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 the precision of seven uh, decimal points 
and such a calculator will give you the answer x1 equal to 10 power 4 so that is correct but x2 will become 0 that's because when you use the formula and you compute the squares you know in the formula there is a b square that will come and the b square for our b will give you 10 power 8 and 10 power minus it so already that 10 power minus it is going to be ignored but when you have 10 power 8 everything else is also going to be ignored for that and that's why the there is some loss of information because the calculator has a limit of precision so the error in the second solution has already become a hundred percent error remember we were looking at x1 equal to 10 power 4 that was correct but x2 equal to 10 power minus 4 has now become x2 equal to 0 so there is a very very significant error in the second solution and this has happened because of the rounding of error we will need to see how to work with such cases but we should also be able to find out that there has been an error in the very first place if we don't even realize that there is an error then there is no way we are going to work towards solving that error or towards improving the error okay so we need to know it's important to have some way to see whether there is an error and that's why our error analysis is very very important so in our example for instance if you had any equation you had a, this um, quadratic equation and if any solution was the zero solution then you should notice that the constant term will also be zero whereas our constant term was one it's not zero and therefore x2 equal to zero cannot be a solution that's where you should realize so there is some theory part which is needed so this is where some special knowledge of the problem which we had in our case because whenever there is the solution zero is there then x should divide the whole equation and therefore the constant term has to be zero so this special knowledge of the problem which we call the theory component that will be useful and then we will see how to work around these kind of errors how to write numbers so as such errors are taken care of and one key takeaway point that you may perhaps take from this very beginning lecture is that however large the capacity of a machine may be that capacity is still finite whereas our capacity human capacity is almost infinite and so that i guess that's a very good point to stop at this time, this point and i see you in your next lecture thank you